more or less some sensitivity analysis and how what's the best way to uh, utilize data tables and also the goal seek function as well. They're both very powerful tools within Excel to sort of be able to map out different scenarios. And it's very, certainly very useful in a corporate finance setting. Um, if you want to run some sensitivities and, and learn a bit more about um, the key drivers of business and how to pull those different levers. So first off, let's just start into goal seek. So what oftentimes we get asked to do is to say, okay, what do we need to get our margin to, to be able to, you know, generate EBITDA of X, Y, Z. Um, and in, in this situation, this is just a very, very basic um, equation in terms of what levels do, levers do we need to pull to be able to achieve a share price valuation of 30 bucks. Now, I built up this uh, DCF spreadsheet uh, based on a prior video. So if you haven't yet um, checked it out, definitely go check it out. It's a pretty comprehensive overview from start to finish of getting from a, uh, or more or less taking you through a, a sort of a very basic DCF analysis, but one that doesn't stray too far at all from what um, what is um, actually put into practice in evaluation setting. So right here, what le we've just got, what lever do we need uh, to pull to achieve a share price valuation of 30 bucks? Now, if we're looking at revenue growth here, this is one of the inputs that we, we can play with. Now, if we go 10% here, that's feeding into this amount, which is pulling through into our share price valuation here. But there is a much quicker way uh, to do this, and it's known as the goal seek function. So this, you might have a, a funding requirement or a very, very uh, fulsome, um, calculation, which where it isn't feasible to go and punch in numbers here one by one. So that's just obviously not going to work. And it's not the best use of anyone's time. So the best way to do this is to just jump up to data. And then we've got this uh, ribbon up here, what if analysis. So click on that. And then goal seek is what we want to utilize here. So if we've, then we bring up the different um, inputs. So what we want to do here effectively is set cell Z9. So I've just pulled this through from below. Now, if we scroll down, that's just pulling off the share price here, um, which is a, we're just bridging from enterprise value to equity value with our net debt adjustments. Then we divide it by shares outstanding. So we've got a illustrative share price valuation of 20 bucks and 30 cents. So if we wanted a valuation of $30, what revenue growth, effectively this input, would we need to be able to achieve a valuation of $30 with all the other variables remaining constant. So that is one of the limitations of this in that you do not have the ability to sensitize two variables at the same time, but we can get into a sensitivity, a data table down below, which is a much, again, a very easy way to plot this out. So if we look at our revenue growth, we wanna set this value to $30 and we wanna be changing cell F 10, which is our revenue growth assumption. So if we click through there, goal seek now plays it around and we've got a revenue growth rate that we need of 17.5% in order to be able to achieve a uh, share price valuation of $30. So if we just control Z that, drop back. So we've got our initial one was 17.5. So we can drop into here, 17.5%. It's values on that. And that's, this is a way where we can just sort of isolate the different variables. And just if we need to present to a partner or to a board or whatever it might be, we can um, describe to them the levers that need to be pulled in order to generate the, um, that share price. So now if we want to look at our normalized EBITDA margin, so this might be through any combination of, you know, revenue margin, GP um, or overhead um, efficiencies. So what, what level would we need to get this to? So it's currently at 25% here on the assumptions. So what would we, would we need to get a valuation of $30? So it's the exact same process. We just jump into what if, goal seek. We want to set the share price again to $30. Simply changing cell 25. And what this is showing is that we need a share price valuation or a uh, normalized EBITDA margin of 29.2%. Our company might be able to bridge this through um, cost of sales synergies or, you know, reducing freight costs or whatever it might be. And obviously in, in today's environment, that's just not really feasible. Um, but those are the sorts of things that you try to elucidate to clients in terms of, you know, how could you 
pull the, these different levers in order to be able to um, drive growth in the business. And then if we look at working capital absorption, we're currently assuming 10%. So wait, let's just pop this back. We have a 25%. Just pop this back to 25%. Now working capital absorption is 10%. So that means for every, effectively, every uh, dollar of revenue, you're going to need 10 cents uh, to be able to, to fund that um, investment in working capital and to be able to fund that uh, growth. So let's just play around with this one as well. So what if goal seek, we want to again, set this to value 30. We want to change cell working capital absorption. So 7.1%. So that's assuming improvement in your working capital cycle. And you can see that here in terms of the increase, you know, slash decrease. And with a working capital requirement, that's decreased to 8.5 in the first year. If we go back, that was 12 uh, million dollar investment required in the first year. So if we go back and uh, get that 7.1, you can paste that value in here. Put this back to 10%. So that's effectively what we need in order to be able to, I'll just bring myself over here just for ease, to um, do some goal seek. And it's very, it's a very simple formula, but it's very powerful as well because you, you'll might, you'll have, it, oftentimes you'll need, either need to do some break even analysis or some other, some other, um, discrete pieces of work where you've, you'll have to use something like this. And goal seek is definitely very quick and powerful in terms of um, being able to flesh that out. And it's very, obviously very simple. There's no macros or VBAs or um, modeling that's too complicated behind it. So that's um, a pretty useful tool there. Now, just moving on to data tables. Now, hypothetically speaking, we, we wouldn't want to be a, have to effectively plot out one, two, three, go through and goal seek for all these different options. What we can do as well is a sensitivity table. So what we need to do here, and oftentimes these are very fiddly and people struggle with them. And oftentimes I've got to go back and, and look up on Google how to, how to do these things as well. So what we want to do here is have our input or our, the, the item that we want to flex. So our share, we just pull that through off our share price of $20 and 30 cents. Now, in our quote unquote row variable, we want to flex the normalized EBITDA margin. So that will be our um, 20.5%. 20, 20 so we've just got a range of different variables here. So what happened if this went to 15% or up to 32.5%? And then also similarly, we want to play with a revenue growth assumption here. So from 5.5% to 9.5%. So currently we're 75 um, so obviously the sense check here is that this item should equal to 20.3 um, in cell W23 here. So the way to do this and set up this data table is we just select all this data. Let me go back to our what if analysis. Let me go to our data table. I'm going to click that. And our row input cell. So our row is normalized, the normalized EBITDA input here. So we click on that. And then we want to click on normalize EBITDA, click back down. And then the column input, click on that as well. And that'll be our revenue growth there. So we click on back on that. And then boom, we have effectively all the different share prices that would eventuate if you flexed these two variables. Now, this is fine in and of itself and by itself, but visually it's not as powerful if, as if we could do some sort of conditional formatting so to show different ranges, say from share prices above 30 bucks to or 20 bucks to 30 bucks or 20 bucks and below. So what we can do here as well is we can select all this data. Let me go home, conditional formatting. And then we want to do highlight cells rules. And then we want to do greater than. So what we want to do here is what if, if, if our share price is above $30, which is, a bit punchy. Let's just fill that with green text. Boom, we're done there. So that's everything above 30 bucks is solved there. Now we want to go back, jump back in. And then we're going to between. And then we want to say here, maybe our inputs will be $20 and um, $30. So effectively what it's currently at up to 30 bucks. So maybe we'll do that yellow or slash amber color. And then we click on it again, highlight cell rules, blah, blah, blah. And then anything less than, and then we're going to shit the bed here. So 20 bucks. 
is below what our current valuation is. We might fill that with red text, you know, just sort of a, a gen generic sort of traffic light scenario there. Click that, boom. So there you have it. That's a pretty simplistic overview of how to build out some sensitivity tables and, um, and sort of build on perhaps some DCF analysis that you've done previously. And you haven't checked out this earlier video, do check it out. It's very fulsome and pretty much bulletproof. Um, it's a very, very good walkthrough from start to finish of, you know, how to flex some flex a model and add discount and um, generate your, your whack and discount rates. And, and more or less that bridge as well from EV to equity value, which is obviously very important in corporate finance. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, Feel free to like and subscribe. Uh, more content coming soon. Uh, cheers for now. Bye.